Greetings, my friends, my mishpata, and Shabbat Shalom. I am greeting you from sunny Florida this Shabbat. And this evening, before we begin our uh, chit-chat session, we have a volunteer, George, who is going to read Psalm 139. I would like to encourage all of you, our subscribers, to volunteer and send psalms and poems and spiritual hymns for us to use during our worship session. Amen? So let's welcome George, and I pray that this session would be a blessing to you. Thank you. Psalm 139, a psalm of rejoicing. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought of far off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yet the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the, as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, in thy and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me! O God, how great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I wake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and Thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Welcome back to our happy hour. Hey. This is the uh, second uh, happy hour of the year. So I just have, I have one message to those of you that have not started your New Year's resolution yet. It's not too late. <laughs> it's never too late. <laughs> and if you have started, it's not, it's too early to quit. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't quit yet. Don't quit yet, that's right. We still got many, many more months to go. So anyway, so welcome back. And uh, Well, I have the same resolution I've had the past 10 years to uh, lose 10 pounds. So uh, okay. not just recopy it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Mine's yeah. a little bit more than 10. <laughs> same, same goal, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so well, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. Okay. All okay. right. And uh, and sister, since you went last last time, okay. Uh, why don't we have you go first this time? All right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Um. And uh, actually, I've, I've heard I've, I've worked with a lot of Jewish folks, so I've heard this question a lot. But um, it's a it's a really s small question from Tahir. Why don't the Jews believe in Jesus? Okay. That is a good question. <laughs> and a good question deserves a proper answer. Okay. All right. Okay. Why don't the Jews believe in Jesus? Well, I think first of all, we have to recall uh, that the early church was only made up of Jews. Yes. In fact, in the book of Acts, 
Acts, uh, they were wondering and struggling as to whether or not Gentiles uh, could come into the faith. And Peter himself needed a revelation from heaven in order to consider allowing Gentiles into the faith. And that's in Acts chapter 10. Mm -hmm. The idea that they had, it seems, was that once all the Jews were saved, then they would go and preach to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But God himself, he bypassed them when many Gentiles were filled with the Holy Ghost before they were even baptized in water. Like, oops. Okay. 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 <laughs> there it is. Yes, yes. So at that time, the Jews who did not believe, they were really pushed on by the lawyers and the teachers, the, the Pharisees of the day, because let's face it, the temple was big bucks to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, remember yeah. when Jesus overturned the money changers? Mm -hmm. So they didn't like this new uh, movement, the new way that was coming in and taking over their finances. Mm -hmm. So the teachers lied to many to their own destruction. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, if you're in a position of being a teacher, uh, we shouldn't be turning hearts away from God, absolutely. which is exactly what they were doing. But anyway, back to the early church. So what happened? The early church was made up of Jews. Well, and to the Romans and yes, Constantine yes. and mm -hmm. all the rest. And they began to accuse the Jews of killing Jesus. Uh, they mm -hmm. killed the Son of God, um, mm -hmm. which they actually did do. But it was preordained. If you think about it, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. He takes away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. And it was preordained that a priest should uh, sacrifice the lamb and that he should die to reconcile us all to himself, and so it was. But I understand the question because when we read all the prophecies about Jesus in Isaiah and Micah and all the rest, it surprises us that the Jews don't believe because he's written about in, in every a right. chapter of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but again, this anti-Jewish sentiment, yes, it, it yes. perpetuated retaliation of the Jews against Christianity and against our leader, Jesus Christ. They associated Jesus with the harsh treatment that they received, and therefore they rejected Jesus. Now, the more modern rabbis, they say that Jesus cannot be the Messiah because he didn't fulfill the job requirements. I don't know, healing the sick, raising the dead um, seems to be the job requirement necessary, but <laughs> Jesus fulfilled every single prophecy written about him mm -hmm. in the scripture. So Amen. it is a sin of unbelief. Now, with all that being said, I would like to read a scripture from Romans 11, verse 25, that says that all Israel will be saved. Will be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Romans 11. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn the godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved mm -hmm. on account of the patriarchs. For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Mm -hmm. Just as you, you who were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy mm -hmm. as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they now will receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience 
so that they may have mercy on them all. Amen. 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 So, uh, what do you think about uh, Tahir's uh, question? You know, um, hmm. You know, I was thinking because when I lived in Haifa, Israel, um, and I was talking to some of my friends that are that are Jewish. However, most of them were atheists. Mm -hmm. They they saw God and they saw Judaism or, mm -hmm. or, or being a Jew as a nationality, okay. more so than a, as a religion. Oh, okay. And um, and then living there and and being with them, mm -hmm. you could see it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think. I think the hardness of their heart has to happen because the scripture says that, that it has to happen so that the equal number of Gentiles can mm -hmm. come in. Come into the faith, yeah. And into the faith. However, I still think God loves the Jews. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. that they are his people. Yes. And as I was talking to one of my friends earlier this week, um, we as Christians were drafted, we, we were grafted we're on grafted mm -hmm. to the olive tree. You know, and if God was not even afraid to cut down the olive tree, what would he do to us that are grafted on? Yeah. So we can't get the big head. Yeah. But when it comes to Jesus, I mean, when it comes to Jesus and the Jews, that is something I seldom ever think about mm -hmm. or even speak to because I don't feel I have the right to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if there, if there are people out there that can really minister to, to, to my brothers and sisters that are Jewish, mm -hmm. then do so. Amen. But Amen. I think our biggest, the biggest thing that we can do is to love them. That's yes. true. Mm -hmm. Is to love them and to not only to love them, but to embrace them because historically the Christian church has persecuted the Jews. Excellent. Amen. When you look at when you look at the Spanish Inquisition, mm -hmm. looking back then, and then if you look at um, um, Nazism, the same thing. Yes. The Lutheran Church moved oh, yeah. the move in there. Oh, yeah. And even today in some of our modern Christian movements, we, we try to do everything. Um, within the Christian church to stop people from thinking that Jesus was a Jewish young man. Exactly. I mean, yeah. he was a good Jew. He yeah. was a good attender of temple. Yeah. Yeah. But we try to erase the Jewishness of Jesus, then exactly. you have you have exactly. something that was never scriptural. Exactly. No, I have, absolutely right. not. Oh, That's all I'm um, saying. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly agree, you know, with what you're saying and uh, the way in which the cross was used, you know, oh, down yes. through the century the pogroms yes. and how the Jews were blamed for centuries mm -hmm. for not just the death of, of Christ but um, you know it, it was hatred from Satan mm -hmm. and, and the way in which the cross was used and so this example that I'm going to use is actually of someone when I lived in Jerusalem um, that's Orthodox and still oh. is Orthodox mm -hmm. and um, he was he's the founder of the, Chris, the Temple Mount Faithful Movement so these are Jews that are planning to rebuild the temple and I remember volunteering there and um, his testimony is one uh, while when he was a soldier in the army mm -hmm. uh, they were fighting Syria and so a miracle happened and mm -hmm. the miracle happened because he cried out Lord save me Amen. but the salvation that the Lord provided him was um, witnessed by the Syrian soldiers so the way they explained it the Syrians were that mirage of angels descended oh, from man. heaven, mm -hmm. protected him, seriously mm -hmm. protected him, mm -hmm. uh, and they were mystified and terrified, so they went to the United Nations and explained, we saw the angels of the Lord protecting mm. this soldier. And, uh, and so there was a salvation provided. It's, it wasn't a missionary handing a tract, right, right, right. but there still his life was spared. And so these type of things are happening in the Orthodox community, and the only way that I can explain it is that God's ways are higher mm -hmm. than our ways. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, he says at the in the book of Zechariah, I think yes. the 12th chapter, mm -hmm. that when he returns, he's going to pour out his spirit mm -hmm. of... Um, grace and, and supplication, supplication and mm -hmm. then the houses will receive them. That's the right. house of Israel will receive them. Mm -hmm. so, so that's after he returns yes. that you have this general repentance of the that's nation. Right. So I agree with you. I definitely yeah. that we can we can we can be a witness. Yes. You know, we yes, have the right. abiding spirit of God living mm -hmm. within us and mm -hmm. that itself is a testimony. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's not necessarily going to be handing out uh -oh. handing out tracks you know in fact i think an equally good question would have been uh, why do many jews believe in jesus yes. because yes. there is a strong messianic movement and many jews 
are coming to faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And many of the educated rabbis have come to faith in Christ after studying the scriptures in depth. You know, the entrance of thy word gives light. So that could be an equally yeah. strong yeah. question. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And I was just going to add to um, you know, what, what Bobby said about some of the anti-Semitic um, things going around. Because even growing up as, um, um, you know, in Afi mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and Catholic, is uh -huh. that, uh, you know, one of the things that you always heard is, uh, you know, we don't like the Jews because the Jews killed Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so they, we always erase that, you know, mm -hmm. Jesus was a Jew. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, with you know, Jews killed Jesus, and even, mm -hmm. even in, with Constantine. I mean, oh, one yeah. of the reasons that um, you know he switched. I mean, we all used to go into church on Sunday. Yeah. Okay? But at one time, of course, uh, the Sabbath was on a Sabbath. Oh yes, yeah. of course. Um, but um, but you know, I think uh, y'all know this. And one of the reasons he changed from Saturday to Sunday was that he did not want to worship on the same day that the as the Jews. Yeah. So. Uh, but having said that, I mean, you know, Roman, Romans uh, 11.25 talks yeah. about, you know, there's a time for the Gentiles and yeah. the time mm -hmm. for the yes. Jews. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, you know, I do want to add another site to that. I mean, there is a site, um, you know, one for Israel that, um, yeah. that you can go to. And at that site, there are thousands of testimonies oh, um, yeah. from yeah. Jews that have accepted mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. So, oh, yeah. So yes, it's yes. um you know there are still you know the time I don't think the time is that is right yet yes mm -hmm. uh, for all of the Jews yeah. but at the same time there are many many Jews that, that are coming, are coming to the faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I hope we answered your question, Ted. Yeah, 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 you know. Um, <laughs> Thank you. That's a good one. Keep setting Thank them you. in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to take the next one. Okay. All right. What's All the next right. One? And uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, this next one is from Sandra. And um, it's, uh, Sandra wants to know, um, why does the Old Testament God seem so different from the New Testament God? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a very good question, because uh, I have heard that so many times. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you constantly hear about how the God of the Old Testament mm -hmm. is one of wrath, while the yeah. New Testament God mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. one of love. Mm -hmm. And um, and I do have, I just have one answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one God. There's only one God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the. Um, you know, just for history, you know, God reveals himself in the New Testament the same way that he reveals himself in the Old Testament. Amen. There's a lot of uh, a misconception and confusion. Um, you know, but in the Old Testament, back on Malachi 3, 6, it says that there is only one God, the Lord does not change. He does not change. And I, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. It's the same God. Same God. Mm -hmm. But the only way that you can understand that, the only way to really come to grips with that is mm -hmm. by studying the Bible. The more time spent on the Bible, the more you realize that, uh, the more it becomes evidence that these, this God is not different at all. He expresses both love and wrath in the Old Testament as well as, well as the New Testament. Okay. 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 So if I stick to the Old Testament, you know, back in Ex Exodus 34, verse 6, this time, I'm not pulling out my back by. <laughs> I, I think it is so nice. When, excuse me. I think it's nice that he pulls out his Bible. and We're doing all this fancy electronic stuff. He has that big Bible there. I think that, that's really cool. Though. I, I want to get fancy, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, back in uh, uh, Exodus 34, verse 6, God told Moses that um, God described himself to Moses. And he described himself as a compassionate Amen. and gracious God. Yes. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Same in Numbers 14, 18. The Lord is slow to anger. He is abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he does not leave the guilty unpunished. Mm -hmm. yes. So in the Old Testament, it's not just about wrath. It's mm -hmm. about God as well. 
And of course, in the New Testament, um, you know, he further expresses himself in John 3, 16, which we all know. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Okay. Amen. Um, so in the Old Testament, I think it's, you know, God really treats the Israelites like, uh, like a loving father would yes. um, a child. When they sinned mm -hmm. and worshiped idols, mm -hmm. he chastised them. Mm -hmm. But he always delivered when they came around and repented of their sins. Amen. So the God's treatment of the Israelites in the Old Testament is the same way that he treats Christians in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. We read that the Lord disciplines the ones he loves mm -hmm. and he chastens everyone he accepts Amen. as his son. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament God poured out judgment and wrath on sin, sin just like in Romans 1.18 talks about the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people mm -hmm. who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Mm -hmm. So God is complicated. I mean, God is complicated. It's complicated. But His love. It, but the primary thing is that His love is seen in all of Scriptures, and He's constantly calling out to people, and wants to be in relationship, in a love relationship mm -hmm. with God, with Him. He's gracious. He's slow to anger. But He's also God. Mm -hmm. He's also the ultimate judge. Who has to judge those that refuse to obey his word mm -hmm. and choose to worship gods or idols of their own creation? So he has to be both a love, loving father yes. and a punishing father. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so whenever we're reading different sections of the Bible, I mean, it's easy to see, you know, to kind of specialize on one aspect of God. Mm -hmm. So as you read the yes, Old Testament, yes, yes. you know, you see one thing about God. You're reading another section. New Testament, you see another aspect of God. So it's easy to, to, to see that it's, you know, to apply this, it's different God, but it's all the same. Yes. And, uh, and, and let's not forget that we're talking about, you know, one Bible, but it's 66 books. books. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, written by 40 different authors, mm -hmm. uh, translated and merged mm -hmm. from three different languages mm -hmm. over a span of 1,500 mm -hmm. years. So it's, uh, uh, you know, so to combine all of that into one document mm -hmm. that from beginning to end yeah. is without contradiction, I mean, that's a miracle in and itself. It itself. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, uh, and the last thing I want to say about this, yeah. <laughs> the last thing I want to say about this is that in the, uh, in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, um, it uses a sacrificial system. Right. To atone for sin. So mm -hmm. when you look at that, it, it seems a little more barbaric, you know, you know, more savage. You know, how can a God be like that? In the New Testament, of course, Jesus died and atoned for our sins. Mm -hmm. um, Once and for all, right. right. But that, that could kind of add to the impression that the Old Testament is a little more, you know, a little harsher, you know, mm -hmm. more bad. You know, why we gotta kill all these animals? You know, why why when you go somewhere you gotta kill every man, woman, and animal? Um Mm, you know, but but again, it is. Um, uh, I really believe it is one God. There, there is one God, and I, I've been asked that question as well because of the wars that we read about mm -hmm. in the Older Testament, and uh, that happened when the um, iniquity of the Amorites was complete. So God had given them chances and chances to repent, mm -hmm. like Nineveh, and even during that time. Even, for example, the war against Jericho. Mm -hmm. We see that Rahab was redeemed. All of yes, those who yes. turned to the Lord were redeemed. Mm -hmm. yes. So Absolutely. there is, it's, yes. there's one God. One God. And yes. He is the same redemptive God to those who repent um, and to those who deserve judgment. He's yes. the only one who can exact vengeance because mm -hmm. he's the only righteous one. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking um, <clears throat> when you were talking about the God of the Old Testament and the New Testament, I like the fact that you didn't mention all the books because one of the things that you do learn in seminary, they always teach us is that the thread, the redemptive thread, mm -hmm. 
And that's what unites all the books of the okay. Bible is that is that God drawing humanity back to himself. Okay. And I think I think one of the things about the Old Testament Think about it. We love preaching out of the Old Testament. Oh, yeah. And we love because it's so dramatic and, and God is getting back at the enemy. So Lots some of, of that, <laughs> some of that is because of our preaching. Okay. But when you read Psalm, mm. you hear about the love of God. Mm. When you look at um, Ruth, you, 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 you feel the love of God. When you're looking at Jonah, you see the mercy of God. Yes. When, you, when you're reading Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, you, you, you can see the exhaustion of God. And, and so it's not just all rap. We just know the major story. Yes, yes. And, and they are like, ah, ah. And then when you look at the New Testament, it's nothing like that. It's about Paul going forward mm -hmm. and Jesus sharing in the parables. So I think it's, 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 the, it's, it's just a different look at God, which we need it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. nobody wants to see a God that's already ready, that is always ready to swatch you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We need a God that's love. Well, and, and Revelation, uh, the book of Revelation. Well, he's going to swatch you in love with Revelation. Yeah. 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 But, but outside of that, I outside, think, of that. outside of that, no. but I think it's that looking at God from that perspective, mm -hmm. it helps us to see him as a father. Because yes. sometimes in our society, and even sometimes with the people that we have here, they don't have good examples of a father. That's true. But God is always that God good example. Right. And if you look at it from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament, God is still that loving Father that's drawing, drawing us to Himself. So I think I think you know that I think that was I think that was a very difficult question just yeah. to answer in a few minutes. Yes, yes. And you need a whole like theology course on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not, not, not to even talk about how you know the Old Testament is uh, you know God had to establish. The law. Yes. 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 The New Testament. Yes. Yeah. Jesus there. came to fulfill, to yes. fulfill the law. So, I mean, there, there's a whole bunch of there's stuff, bunch of stuff there. under there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I agree with everything I'm yeah. hearing. Yeah. 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 Jesus is the same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and forever. And forever. Amen. 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 That was pretty okay. good. Wow. Um, that was great. Well, okay. That was a good answer, uh, yeah, absolutely. brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, case speaking on that, speaking of uh, judgment, um. and uh, you know, and maybe that terrible place. You know, oh, that terrible place. We don't all get to go to heaven. <laughs> um, <laughs> this question is from uh, <laughs> this question is from Lorraine. Okay. Since hell is such a terrible place, and God loves us, how could He send anybody to hell? It's tough for me to accept that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, Lorraine, first of all, you are right that God is a loving God. In yes, fact, the Bible says that God is love. Amen. In 1 John uh, 4, 16. Mm -hmm. And so in, in order to understand uh, how a loving God could allow uh, anyone to spend eternity in hell, we have to kind of try to understand some of the attributes, the character, the the nature of God. Mm -hmm. And so he is he is love, but he's also an absolutely infinite holy God. And so um, so sin offends the holiness of God. And that just mm -hmm. means that um, whether we're talking about the sin of the world down through the ages or whether we're talking about our own nature, our mm -hmm. actions, our thoughts, uh, we're born with the sin nature. It just means that his holiness is offended. It's like a crime against against God's holiness. And mm -hmm. so um, and so there has to be some sort of punishment for that crime, for that sin, and that's demanded by his justice. So God is a just God, and so uh, his justice demands a penalty for sin. Now the problem is we can't, um, we can't pay the price for the sin that's been committed. So like on one hand, you have God who is a just God, he's a holy God, and he demands um, punishment for sin. On the other hand, you have a God of love mm -hmm. and a God of mercy, and and He demands reconciliation and and, and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so, so when we look at God, we we, we understand that um, uh, that sin uh, that we all were born in sin, and if we depended only on His judgment, mm -hmm. then there would be no hope. Oh, yeah. There would be no hope for any of us. Yes. We all would be doomed. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, Fortunately, we don't have to <laughs> depend. It says, uh, while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. uh, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. And so in doing so, the price 
to satisfy the justice of God, which demanded that a penalty be paid. Mm -hmm. It was paid by God himself. Amen. He died, Amen. you know, for our sins. He paid the price. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, um, he, he actually descended into hell, we believe, on the, you yes. know, while after the death. And mm -hmm. so he paid the full price, which mm -hmm. means there's no need for us That's to right. pay the price. Mm -hmm. our, Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. Mm -hmm. paid and it all. so, um, you know, our, our part is to accept the forgiveness. You know, Amen. God's not going to force anyone to accept salvation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have free choice. We have uh, free will. And so... Um, to reject Christ, in effect, is to um, to say you'll pay the price yourself. It's like rejecting the price that God paid, and you're just choosing mm -hmm. to to pay that price yourself. And mm -hmm. hell is real. Hell is just mm -hmm. as real as, as heaven. Mm -hmm. And so, we, if there are many people that don't believe it, there are disagreements about mm -hmm. it. Some believe hell is like annihilation, and that just means that you cease to exist. Yeah. Other people believe yeah. it's a place of eternal. Uh, torment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I happen to be in the latter mm -hmm. group. I do believe when Jesus, Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of the verses, uh, just to mention a couple of verses. Oops, can't scroll. <laughs> well, I remember one. He said that uh, it's better that you cut off your hand oh, that's right. and uh, mm -hmm. your foot yes, rather right. than to enter into life. Right. It's better to enter into life maimed than it is. Yeah. To, um, to perish. To That's right. right. Then right. to then to perish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so um, when their worm dies, yeah. That's right. And he said, all persons, you know, we're all born. We all have that sin nature. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The verse that you mentioned: "For God so loved the world mm -hmm. yeah. that He gave His only begotten Son." So it's on, it's on us to mm -hmm. to ch make that choice yes. to accept them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and so that's you know. Yeah, Lorraine, when God said, uh, Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No man cometh unto the Father except for me. So he's mm -hmm. the only way. And it's, you know, where mm -hmm. you spend eternity is, is a choice that you make. God uh, doesn't send us to hell. We choose. That's right. Know, by rejecting. That's right. By you not know, by, accepting Jesus. That's right. But mm -hmm. he's, you know, he still loves us. Yeah. He loves us. It, it's, it's not his will that any should perish. perish. But again, he's not going to force his will right. on us. He doesn't force salvation. Mm -hmm. We have an option to choose. And so the most important thing I would say is in Romans, uh, if you confess with your mouth. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that, and, and believe in your heart, mm -hmm. thou shall be saved. It's just that thou simple. Shalt, it's thou shalt be saved. Amen. Saved. It's just mm -hmm. that simple. So, Amen. So hell is real, but uh, but so is heaven. And Amen. it's a choice. And you just, <laughs> Place your faith in God, confess your sins, and even after you do that, after you come into the family of God, there's still going to be sins, there's still going to be yeah. grievances that we commit against God, but we have a loving God who forgives us. Amen. He That's forgives right. us of our God. sins. So, Amen. So I Amen. hope it, that answers. No, I, I think that answers a lot of questions. I think yeah. so. And, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and the way to have, I mean, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Yahweh. Yeah, um, yeah, instead yeah. of my way, because you know, yeah, uh, you know, no, yeah, 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 my, my way, because a, a lot of people do want to. I did it. Yeah, it's way. Just, you know, I, I, I'm a good person. You know, mm -hmm. why should I go to hell? I <laughs> know. Mm -hmm. you know. So, so I mean, a lot of people they want to kind of define it themselves, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and you know, you cannot be your own judge. <laughs> you, know, that's, no. you know, ultimately, um, you know, you have to be judged. Yeah, you can't be your own judge. You know, and the way I think, you know, there's heaven and there's hell, and I think of heaven as the ultimate presence of God. Uh, praise God, Amen. and. Um, but there are a lot of people who do not, they don't love God. They don't want to be okay. in God's yeah. presence. Mm -hmm. And so God's like, well, if you don't want to be in my presence, there's only one other place that mm -hmm. you, can, you can go. But um, okay. we have these same people. They don't, they don't want to go to church. You ask them to go to church. They don't want to sing. They don't want to worship God. They don't want to go to heaven. They, uh, they are rejecting the Lord. So they have chosen their own path, you know? I, I think for me, I, um, just two examples, I have one example, and one that really, that really just kind of earth shattering for me. I think whenever someone says, God is sending me to hell, I'll often ask them, okay, then what do you want to follow? 
Because to me, when a person says that God is sending me to hell, I, I, in, my, in my inner ear, I hear them saying, I want to live my own life. Mm -hmm. I don't want any rules over me. I, want, I am like the Invictus. I'm the master of my faith. I'm the captain of my soul. And it's that arrogance that we come up with. Like, God, I know what I need. Mm -hmm. So I look at that. And then I also look at the fact that when someone said that God is sending them to hell, God is not. And you, you all touched on it. You have a free will. Yeah. At any time that you are breathing, you can call out to God. Amen. Because one thing about God said, that the, the rain will fall on the just and, and the and unjust. Amen. And God also said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. Mm -hmm. I'll separate them at the end. That's yeah. right. That's so right. I often look at it from this point of view, um, that hell is very real. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example of this. Being a, being a chaplain for over 30 years, I've watched a lot of people die. Mm -hmm. Now, the one that was the most earth-shaking for me was this guy that was dying. I was with him. and didn't have any family with him. The nurse, the doctor, and I was there. I remember just four, about maybe four to five to 10 or 20 seconds before he died, his eyes got really wide. Now, I've seen that before. People said, do you see that angel? That's my aunt there. There's people. Not with this guy. And he said, he said, he saw, he, he, was he was describing, I see this dark figure standing at the door. Well, he couldn't see it. He said, this dark figure is looking at me. And then as he was, as he was taking his last breaths and things like that, he said, I don't want to go with them. Mm. I don't want to go with them. And those were his last words. Mm. And you could see the terror in his eyes mm -hmm. and him saying, I don't want to go with them. So I don't care what your opinion is about <laughs> hell or heaven. I just watched a man dying mm. saying that I don't want to go with them. I don't know what those them are, mm. but I guarantee you I don't want to go with them. I don't want to go with them. <laughs> I don't want to go with them. So I think you can, I think there is this thing in, in humanity that pushes us to worship God. Mm -hmm. But in our rebellious nature, mm. some people fight things. I don't want and so I believe God is always calling out to people. Mm -hmm. And until the end, that is their choice. Yes. Yeah. Now when yeah. you say the end, think about the thief on the cross. Oh, I mean, yeah. he could do nothing except believe. Yes. He didn't yes. have, he didn't, yep. God didn't say because mm -hmm. you believe you can come down and yes. from mm -hmm. the cross and you're pardoned. But that he exhibited faith in God said today. Yep. Yes, today. Mm -hmm. Today you should be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. So that's the essence of faith. Right? Yep. Yes. Yes. Amen. I think I, I was just thinking about what you said. I mean, that's a very yeah. deep message. But, um, you know, I think one thing, too, is, um, you know, I mean, even those that, that don't believe in God, mm -hmm. don't, that are uh, pushing God mm -hmm. away, I think there is one thing we can do. It's, yeah. um, uh, they're not necessarily condemned. If we pray for them. Pray for them. Because, I, I mean, I, I don't know. If you, at that final hour. Yeah. You know, you know, you pray for them, yeah. and that final hour, maybe I don't know, maybe they meet Jesus. Yeah. Hey. They pass hey. I mean, I, you, know, you never know. What's you never, you never, you never, you pray never know what. You, that's yeah. why people say who's going to be in heaven. That's, I don't know. I don't have a contract. I don't know who's there. But you never know if someone is reaching out in that last moment. Because yeah. one of the things I often believe, because I've been with families who have people that suicide, mm. and I said, you know. You don't know if this person was crying out to God as they were dying. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't know that. So it is not a death sentence. No. But what it is is that God's compassion and love is far beyond oh, yeah. what well, we can ever imagine. He saved us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. And, and so to me, God can do those impossible things. Yeah. But we choose yes. to yes. reject Christ every moment that we choose not to accept. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And I, I don't want to drag this out, but you mentioned suicide, and I feel like I should say this. I feel led of the Holy Spirit because many people think that because a person commits suicide, that condemns them to hell mm -hmm. because that's the mm -hmm. um, last thing that they did is they yeah. took a life. They took a life. Yeah. However, most people who commit suicide have mental illness. Yeah. It is a sickness. So you either yeah. die of heart disease, you die of kidney disease, you die of lung disease. If you die of mental illness and kill yourself, it is just an illness. Mm -hmm. So judgment doesn't come because you commit suicide. Judgment comes on whether you have accepted Jesus mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Yeah. All 66 books. <laughs> oh, I know that's a lot of books, y'all. Yeah, and, and I want that read by tomorrow. <laughs> and take copious notes. <laughs> oh, boy. Bobby, that's the last one for you. Yeah, okay, what's the last one? Okay, okay, okay. What do you got? Um, this uh, question is from Jack. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Jack wants to know what are some key ways to share your faith with others? Okay. Wow, okay. Well, I like that. How can, and what are the key ways to share my faith with others? Mm. Well, Jack, the first thing I would say, you got to live. You got to live the life that you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, you, you, can't, you can't be like me, because I'm not going to say these people. Yeah. You can't be like me and, and be a hypocrite. No, I'm not joking. But the thing is, first of all, you got to live the life that you are saying that you live. That is the biggest witness. Yes. Now, the next thing is I was taught and that people have taught me and I've taught other people is this. Always have your 30 second, your 10 second, your 30 second and your one minute testimony about okay. what God has done. Nobody wants a bunch of scriptures thrown at them. Let's just be real. Okay. Because I remember when I was growing up in D.C. and we had the chick publication tracks and we had the little tracks and... And we always did, who wanted to read a track that the print was so small, you're like, what? And then there's so many scriptures that you're lost, especially when you're a believer, I mean, not a believer, not, you, you don't know. It's, yeah. So keep your message short and tight, and keep your scripture reference to something they may know. You I, know, they, they call that, uh, in front of me, they call that the elevator speech. Yeah, the give it the elevator speech. speech. Yeah. Give it yeah. the elevator speech. Yeah. The yeah. Give it that elevator <laughs> speech. And then have your scriptures that you use in the elevator, because I oftentimes tell someone, the biggest testimony is, we used to call it friend evangelism. Yeah. And what you do, people will listen to you because I see your life. Yeah. Okay, so when you have that witness into someone's life, let's go with that one first, and then there's another one. That means that person has watched you, so you are witnessing to them every time you say, you know, God gave me this. Jesus brought me through this. They hear that. Mm -hmm. And then when, then give them your testimony. Mm -hmm. And then give them scriptures that, like they know. Most people know John 3.16. Yeah, that gives mm -hmm. it. Most people know the 23rd Psalm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, most people know, uh, what's another good scripture that a lot of people know? Um, Psalm 91. So, everybody knows Psalm 91. You hide you under the wing. Yeah. Stick with things that they know because that would be real to them. Yeah. Um, now, and as you are sharing your faith, share it in a way that it can be properly received. Because what you want, you really want to win that person. Mm -hmm. But you also want the Holy Spirit to do Amen. it. Amen. Because see, one of the things I don't like when I hear people witness, you witnessing to someone and they coming to the Lord, don't put it as a notch in your belt. Because you know what the scriptures say. Some, some water, some plant, no, some plant, some water, but God always gets the yeah, increase. Yeah. So let us think of that as people, yeah. as people who yeah. need to know, learn about God. Yeah. Now, there are situations, because I've trained altar workers for churches too, they are there to share their testimony, to share a little bit of scriptures, and then, the, and then to ask the person, what is it that God, that you want God to do for you? Mm -hmm. What is it? Because a lot of time when people are wanting to rededicate themselves or come to God, some of them have already come to God, but they feel lost. And it's always because there's something in their life that puts up a wall between them and God. And we know what that is, that's sin. And the thing is, when there's sin in our lives, we don't ever want to say it like that, that there's sin in my life, but I just don't feel connected with God. Or I don't feel like God is hearing my prayer. This is where we as Christians can come in. Well, sister, let me pray with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, or brother, let me, let, me, let me pray with you. And here is a scripture, not a whole list of scriptures, but here is a scripture. And we can pray again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, winning someone to Christ isn't done in one visit. It's done over and over and over again. Now, the other way is when I'm I'm walking or I'm at the or I'm, or I'm in the store and you hear God and you know God's voice telling you, you need to tell this person about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now we've all been like God, me talk to that. I mean I do it too, but I'll sit there and say, you know, I don't know you from Adam, but I feel I should pray for you. Nine out of ten times, that person said, you know, I needed this. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was going through A, B, C, and D. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But God will call us to witness to people in some in unusual ways. But the thing is, we have to be open. Yes. Now, 
The, the other question is, are we prepared to be a witness? Mm -hmm. Are we praying every day? Mm -hmm. Lord, help me to, help me to um, mm -hmm. say the right thing. Yeah. Guide me, use me, Lord. Yeah. The second thing is, does my life, now all of us, I'm not going to say y'all, not y'all, I have sin in my life mm -hmm. because I am a sinner saved by grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know there are things in my life that God don't like and I'm praying through them. But that's not going to stop me from witnessing to you. Amen. That's Amen. not going to stop me from sharing yeah. faith with you. Yeah. You know why? We are all in all the struggle the together. Yeah. We're all yeah. in the struggle together. Yeah. And I used to tell people all the time, in terms of witnessing, we all are handicapped. Mm -hmm. Some you can see, some you don't mm -hmm. see. But trust me, we all have a handicap. Yeah, that's right. And when it comes to witnessing, the evil one will tell you you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You don't have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. You remember what you just said yesterday. Mm -hmm. say, you hypocrite. You hypocrite. <laughs> you hit the prick. You know. <laughs> but just think of it. If, if the evil one is working that hard to stop you from sharing your faith, oh, yeah. what does God want to do with the person that you're sharing your faith Amen. with? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you, the question is, what are some key things you use? Use your life, first of all. Mm -hmm. Secondly, use the scriptures that you know. You're not a theologian, so don't do it. You know, if you're not a pastor, stop attending. But you can read the scriptures. If you read the Daily Bread yesterday and that scripture comes back to you, share that scripture. Yes. But the other thing is, look at the long term. How can I win someone through my life? That's and then listen. So that's all I have to say. No, that's Just true. Just to know. Yes. What do you got? What, what, do you, that's true. what do you got? No, no, that, that's really good. I mean, I, but I like what you said about, um, you know, your life. And uh, you know, how you, I think the number one thing that you can do is be a good example. Yeah, that's um, true. And lead that. Uh, try to lead an exemplary life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, back in uh, school, how that old saying that uh, I learned everything I needed to learn in kindergarten. In kindergarten. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that uh, as far as the life that you should be leading, mm -hmm. yes. Proverbs 22. Okay. Okay, what is it? What is it? And I'm I'm just gonna read Oh he's gonna open the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping he would open that Bible one day. And uh, okay. I mean I, I would say the whole prophet, but I'm just gonna read the uh, the okay. first okay. Uh, first line. A good name is more desirable than Ooh. great riches. Mm. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's how you lead your life. It's how. I you mean, lead that's the your best life. way to share your faith. Yes. And um, yeah. and Psalm 22, I yeah. think it's it's one of the it's one of my best songs okay. in yeah. terms of. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs 22. Yeah. This is one of my best proverbs in terms of um, yes. uh, uh, leading your life. So, I you know I'm gonna leave it there. It's yeah. it's uh, you know this really shows you and and don't feel pressure. Because yeah. as far as uh, as far as coming to the Lord, mm -hmm. it's it's not about you. It's you the know. Holy Spirit. Yes. It's yes. it's the Holy Spirit. It's it's Jesus. It's God that brings that calls people to to him. themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. That's true. So we just wanna we just wanna sure. show a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but also there was a time when I was very timid about sharing my mm -hmm. faith, and um, I I talked to my pastor at that time. We were attending a Baptist church. And he said, don't even worry about it. You just bring them to me. This is my job. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was an evangelist. Mm -hmm. And there were people, I said, you know, would you like to speak to my pastor? They're like, well, all right. I ain't got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And I would meet with them and the pastor. And the pastor would lead them um, yes. to Christ. Yeah. So maybe a pastor or a friend, you know, was an evangelist. If you're too timid to do it, mm -hmm. just ask someone who's mm -hmm. a little more mature in the faith to help you. We are all in this mm -hmm. together. That's right. Yes. 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 Just give them the body. Yes. Give them oh, the body. No. <laughs> you know, one of the things, I think, I think what we got to say though, and, and I think, yeah, stop. Anyway, one of the things I think we have to mention is how do you, and this is something I was just, I did the Holy Spirit, I figured with the Holy Spirit, how do you survive a tarnished re reputation to share Christ? And I think that's important because if your reputation is tarnished, it's hard to share Christ mm -hmm. because your sin is glaring you in your faith. And this is what I would tell anybody that's suffering from that. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. That's right. All, all of us. Sin. Mm -hmm. All of us. All of us. Knowing that, this is where prayer comes in. I would say, pray and say, God, I know that you've forgiven me. I know that you've given me a testimony. 
help my life from this day forward mm -hmm. to reflect you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And bring me people that I can witness to and then use my burden or my fall as my mission. Because mm -hmm. your mission turns into your um, your mission turns into your message, which turns into your ministry. All right. Okay. So if you look at it, your, your mission, your ministry, and then your, your message, and then your ministry. Because we all have something mm -hmm. that we've come in front. Mm -hmm. And God is going to bring you to people that can hear that message. So Amen. if you have a tarnished relationship with God, that's okay. It's okay. Repent, fall on your knees, pray to God, ask God for forgiveness, and remember God's going to use that mission, that, that, that mess, as we normally say, that mess turns into that message, which turns into that ministry. All right. So, that's good. The mess turns about. into the message. That's and then good. it turns into the ministry. And then it turns into, into the, the ministry. ministry. So anyway, I hope that helped. I hope that helped you. Um, yeah. And that's, that's something we can always spend more time talking yeah, about, how do you win right. people to Christ. Yeah. And hopefully, maybe one day we should, you know, have a way, yeah. you know, do a little mini evangelism class on how do you walk up to people and share your faith? How do you... What scriptures are the best scriptures? That, that's in a later broadcast, but that's something we can think about, right. too. And just remembering, too, I'm agreeing with everything that's being said, and mm -hmm. just remembering that salvation is the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so when we're living a righteous life, when we're allowing God to work through us, mm -hmm. then we may not be able to see visibly what, what is taking place, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we know that something's taking place in the lives of others. You know, it's all, we can have a testimony and then a witness, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's the witness that, as go. opposed to verbally, um, you know, sharing a track or yeah, sharing our yeah. faith, but mm -hmm. it's our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I know, especially if you're in an environment where, um, in America it's different, but when you're in, cer in certain countries, you have to kind of depend more on your witness. Yes. And then mm -hmm. people begin to ask questions. Yeah. And I've had this happen in Israel, mm -hmm. where people with uh, friends have come and asked me questions about mm -hmm. the faith. Uh, and, you know, Jewish, oh, yeah. Orthodox, yeah. they're asking because of, you know, God being able to use uh, the mm -hmm. witness. Mm -hmm. And Amen. so I don't think there's really any greater honor that we can have than yes. from an eternal perspective to see that our witness change mm -hmm. lives. Amen. Amen. And that Amen. is, uh, Amen. there's no greater honor than, you know, when we get there and look back and just see mm -hmm. our Amen. life, that's uh, what an honor. Yeah, Amen. Amen. You have to walk the walk. I mean, sometimes we stumble. Oh, no, we do. But no, 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 not yeah. sometimes. You will stumble. And <laughs> Let, let's stop saying you are going to stumble. That's true. <laughs> but we, but you, you fall down 11 times, you get up 12. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That you so just true. keep getting up. You, you keep getting up. Yeah. 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 Okay. 11 times 12. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Now we just that was just oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because people use like those big numbers. Right. So let me make it small so some like people can understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, but okay. no, I think it's a, it's a good thing. Oh. It's a good thing. All right, that's all I got, man. Okay, that's all I got. Well, I think we're uh, getting close to the end. Oh, uh, no. uh, the hours up already. Oh, so, uh, my goodness, it's a, it's a happy hour, but but keep being happy. Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's what Thank you for sharing this time with us. Yes. And, uh, and until next time. Amen. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think, I think we did really good with that. Asking, 